Well, joining me now from central London is Lord Patton, the former governor of Hong Kong, who oversaw the colony being handed back by Britain to China uh, 22 years ago. Lord Patton, thanks very much indeed for your time this afternoon. First of all, what's your reaction to those scenes that we saw in Hong Kong last night? I'm extremely sad about them because, of course, they're not at all like the earlier demonstrations by students, um, which were peaceful on the whole. Um, I think it's extremely uh, regrettable that there was violence uh, yesterday. Um, I don't think that's acceptable. Uh, and I think it actually takes away from the really important part of what's been happening, uh, which uh, you referred to uh, earlier in the report, that hundreds of thousands of people, up to two million people, have been uh, demonstrating peacefully and lawfully about their rights as citizens, which they're anxious to to re retain. Um, I think the problem when violence creeps in, as it plainly has, for whatever reason, um, is that it takes away from the from the credibility of that campaign by hundreds of thousands of people. I very much hope the government will, among other things, have a public inquiry into the demonstrations that have taken place over recent weeks and to the way they've been policed and include in that what happened yesterday, because everybody should be keen to know what exactly happened, why the police behaved as they did, above all, who was actually responsible for the violence. Well, yes, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I understand that you have a bit some sympathy with one of the issues at the heart of these protests, this uh, controversial extradition bill which was, was introduced, some concerns that that might be used to send political dissidents to China. Uh, given that you have some sympathy with the protesters, do you worry then that their argument has now been undermined? Well, I, I worry that the point that's been made by all those peaceful demonstrators, don't forget the last but one of those demonstrations with about two million people was led by people uh, in wheelchairs, families, lawyers, business people, manual workers, the whole community was taking part because for them, the extradition law that was proposed demolished the firewall between the rule of law in Hong Kong and what passes for the law in mainland China. Now, that's the biggest issue. The fact that it's probably the case that a few students behaved so stupidly and were violent, even though you can, I suppose, understand their frustrations, even if you don't agree with the way they express them, uh, we shouldn't allow that violence to take away from the biggest issue, which is the way in which Hong Kong is gradually having the noose tightened around it by mainland China. Well, yes, and what do you think mainland China will do now? We've heard uh, that uh, serious illegal actions that they've been described by, by China, and uh, they've talked about the protesters trampling on the rule of law. So what do you think their next step could be? Well, I think it's very odd to hear Chinese officials talking about trampling on the rule of law when they've incarcerated about a million people in Xinjiang. Uh, I hope that the uh, Chinese authorities, the Hong Kong Macau Affairs Office, which looks after Hong Kong uh, at a distance, the foreign ministry, will be rather careful about what they say. And I hope that they will stop suggesting that the joint declaration doesn't have any relevance after 1997. The joint declaration was a treaty signed by Britain and signed by China in good faith. And it's goes on until 2047. It gives us every right um, to talk about what's happening in Hong Kong, to discuss it with China, to discuss it with the Hong Kong authorities. That is our right under international law. And if China says forget about it, what they're actually saying is you can't trust us to keep our word. Well, yes, and that joint declaration, uh, one country, two systems, uh, was agreed, as you said, in 1997 when you left uh, as Hong Kong governor. What is your feeling about that? Do you feel that it's being seriously undermined by China at the moment? I think it is being at the moment. I think to be fair to China, um, before this president, before President Xi Jinping, the Chinese authorities had been pretty good about Hong Kong. Not everything was perfect. They choked back on the development of democracy uh, in uh, Hong Kong. But by and large, I think Hong Kong, you could still regard as operating with a high degree of autonomy, um, under the rule of law, with all the freedoms you'd associate with a plural and open society. I think that has been brought into question since 2014, 
when, to be frank, I think the Chinese uh, government, the regime in Beijing, were unsettled by the democracy demonstrations, which were peaceful, um, unlike what happened uh, last night with a few people who I think behaved really foolishly uh, in uh, smashing through into the Legislative Council building, and uh, uh, allegedly because they didn't think that uh, it really represented them, trashing it. That was not a sensible way to behave. And I'm sure that more sensible members of the community uh, who were taking part in those demonstrations, those peaceful demonstrations, in the 100,000 over the last few weeks will make that plain to them. Uh, China has called this a domestic issue and says that Britain uh, shouldn't interfere. Uh, you were saying that Britain should have the right, given the fact that it was a, a joint declaration between Britain and China that determined the future structure for Hong Kong. So what would you want Britain to do now? Well, not only should uh, Britain um, intervene, uh, should have the right, but it does have the right. And I'm pleased that uh, Jeremy Hunt, the Foreign Secretary, um, said what he did say. Um, this is an international treaty. China is obliged to it. Until 1997, we were obliged to honour our commitments to the people of Hong Kong and explain what we were doing to China. After 1997, until 2047, China is obliged to explain to the people of Hong Kong and to us how it's keeping its commitments uh, to the citizens of Hong Kong. And it can't simply walk away from that unless it wants the rest of the world to believe that it can't be trusted to keep its word. Will China be concerned about contagion of some kind elsewhere in the country? Well, the Chinese keep on telling us that um, the China dream is something that everybody can share, but they seem jolly unsettled when anybody else has a views of their own or wants to have free speech or wants to look up uh, things on the internet. They're very concerned that people shouldn't know what happened in Tiananmen Square in 1989. So they have to get their, they have to get their story right. The truth of the matter is that China is an old-fashioned Leninist aut aut autocracy. Uh, China has done extremely well economic, economically over the last 30 or 40 years. That doesn't mean that its system of government is one which is exportable. And it certainly doesn't mean that it can trash the freedoms of Hong Kong. And Hong Kong's leader, Carrie Lam, uh, suspended this extradition bill that we've referred to. Uh, protesters want it scrapped completely. They want her to stand down. Do you think she should go? Well, I'm, I'm not going to get into that argument. That's a question of for her partly, although she's obviously there because China wants her there. What is absolutely plain, I think, is first of all, all she's got to do is say, I'm not just suspending the bill, I'm not going to reintroduce it. The bill is dead. Secondly, I think she should, as I said uh, earlier, she should have a public inquiry into the whole question of the policing of demonstrations, including what happened yesterday. I think that would, uh, if it was transparent and open uh, and conducted by a, by a senior, um, independent, well-regarded local figure, I think that would help to remove some of the anxieties and concerns people have on both sides, both about the way that peaceful demonstrations are, are policed and about the way that some demonstrations haven't been peaceful and should be made peaceful in the future. 22 years since you set sail from Hong Kong, completing yeah. your stint as the last governor there. How do you feel seeing those pictures that we saw yesterday and seeing the protests over the last few weeks? How does it feel for you? Well, I feel very bad about the... Uh, protests that happened yesterday. But when I look at what's happened over the last few weeks, um, I feel a great sense of shame. Um, not, not because of anything happening in Hong Kong. I think people have behaved extraordinarily bravely and decently. But they've behaved seriously. And I can't help but compare that with what's happening in British politics. Um, I think we have some lessons to learn from those hundreds of thousands of people who've behaved so bravely and so sensibly in order to stand up for the balance between political and economic freedom in Hong Kong. Uh, I wish the state of our debate in this country was rather more serious. Do you want to elaborate on that a little bit further? Well, what, I, what, I, what I'd like to say um, is here we are um, in a debate about the future of our country, um, which is full of mendacity and delusion. Um, and uh, every day uh, there come another set of delusions. At present, uh, we seem to be thinking that um, there are forests, as somebody said, of money-bearing trees out there waiting to shower their gifts on the rather limited number of members of the Conservative Party. Uh, I think what we're seeing uh, is a serious government departing from traditional Conservative values uh, and forgetting 
forgetting about the national interest. And I think that's deeply saddened. But obviously, the main thing I'm concerned about at the moment um, is uh, the future of, of Hong Kong. I hope that here in Britain, we can behave a bit more sensibly. There's rather a limited amount that I can do about that.